how much time does it take for varicosities to actually become troublesome yeah. to somebody? Uh, it's uh, definitely to do with the lifestyle. Uh, if somebody is standing for prolonged periods, mm. um, yeah. yeah. So uh, generally, if you say, uh, usually in women, uh, you know, they say, you know, cooking. If you are standing and cooking for prolonged periods, estrogen also has got its effect, and at the same time, women standing in kitchen and cooking for longer periods of time, they also have got this effect. Pregnancy is the other thing, so it can exacerbate varicose veins when somebody is pregnant because of the pressure hormone, on the veins, pressure also. on the veins also, and also because of the estrogen effect as well. So they tend to have flare up of the varicose mm. during pregnancy. And uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, these construction workers, uh, traffic police, anybody who's standing for long periods of time. So if they don't notice the varicose veins and then they continue to stand, they continue with their lifestyle, which is causing the varicose veins, it'll continue to progress. Mm. So, and yeah. when it progresses, what are the first few symptoms yeah. they will experience? Yeah. Um, so when it progresses, I mean, let me uh, tell you before you see the varicose veins, some people can have symptoms. Mm. Yeah. So it's the other way around in another spectrum. So yes. sometimes people come to us and then they say, I've got leg ache. You know, people are really concerned. These people who Google and then look for all the causes of varicose veins, uh, all the causes of leg pain on Google. And then they find these varicose veins as one of the causes. They come to us and they say, I Googled and then, you know, for my leg ache and then I can't see anything, but then I've got this pain, some kind of a dull ache. Could this be varicose vein? If you ask me, could that be varicose vein? Yes, in the very early stages, what you would see is you won't see any chunky or a dilated vein to start with. All that you would see in the early stages is some kind of heaviness, some kind of dull ache when they are standing for prolonged periods of time without any obvious varicosity underneath the skin. And uh, the key then is to do an ultrasound scan, duplex ultrasound and diagnose varicose veins by looking at the reflux and other parameters. So that's the first symptom, some kind of a chronic dull ache. Mm -hmm. The other thing that people notice is um, you know, some kind of color change, skin changes uh, that you would see. Itching and skin changes is the other thing that, mm -hmm. you, that they would see. And again, this is because of, uh, because of the reflux. What happens is blood tends to stagnate at your ankles for prolonged periods of time and because of that there is a release of the pigment you know our blood is red in color so the hemoglobin the heme part of it it comes out of the blood vessel and that is what causes the pigmentation and the cause for itching is also because of that right. so these are the things so to summarize this for all of you basically even if you do not have obvious large veins or varicosities you could have hidden symptoms like fatigability of, of the legs, occasional swelling of the legs and also a dull ache there. If you have all these, consider the diagnosis of varicose veins and it is very easy to assess them. Use a Doppler ultrasound. It's painless and it's also inexpensive. So that is a key point you take here today. minimal access to treat varicose veins could you just uh, so i know that we can do laser ablation microwave ablation and radio frequency ablation yeah. all three use heat exactly. yeah primarily exactly. inside the vein they yeah. go in the blood just heats up and it seals and we come out okay what is the difference between all these three is there any difference or or is it just names which are different? So wait, let's first yeah. talk about radio frequency ablation as it is quite older than the rest, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, see, when it comes to the, uh, anything, radio frequency, laser or the microwave, it's the heat, as you rightly said, which uh, causes the, uh, you know, the intimate yeah. injury and then that's where, uh, you, that's how you treat varicose veins. One of the differences is the amount of heat generated and the energy, the energy produced in each of these three different modalities is different. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a radio frequency energy, RF energy is different to laser energy and microwave energy is entirely different. So, so it, basically yeah. one burns more you say? One burns more and faster. Faster and faster. one burns just enough but slower? 
Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you have your microwaves and then you just put it up and then you know you can heat up your tea or coffee in so a few seconds. Like so just like a microwave. Just, exactly. It's the so same if energy. we can just take our legs and put it in what? <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So you, you know. You're literally just cooking. Just like it yeah. heats. Yeah. You're Fantastic. just cooking the vein. Mm. Yeah. That's that's what. It so is. you cook the vein from the inside. Yeah. So it just seals up. It seals up, yeah. And then you okay. just bring it out and it continues to seal, 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 exactly. seal. Exactly yeah. like that. Exactly. Okay, oh wow, that's fantastic. Okay, so now radio frequency ablation, I understand. I do a lot of that for the spine, for the nerve roots, but I'm a bit worried when I do that, mm. you know, because it could sometimes burn something which is close by. As you know, our body is full of anomalous yeah. structures. Anomalous is a natural variation of normal, okay? It's it's not supposed to be there, but it can still be there. It's all right. We have to work with all these anomalies. So now coming to laser and microwave ablation, what are your thoughts on both? Uh, my thoughts on both, um, I would say see, laser ablation and microwave pretty much when it comes to the time consumed, it's probably the same. There isn't much of a difference. But in our experience, we were probably the first center in Chennai uh, to do the microwave ablation and not many people have done. So there are not many studies to really say which is better, laser or microwave. But from my personal experience, I would say microwave is a lot more comfortable to patients because patients are absolutely pain free, not just during the procedure, after the procedure. Of course, we do blocks for both the procedures. But despite that, generally after the procedure, when somebody has laser, they have a post procedural uh, some kind of a warmth or some redness not necessarily laser burn but they have some kind of a discomfort I would say after the procedure whereas with microwave ablation I haven't seen a single patient who's complained of uh, warmth or discomfort after the procedure it's, they just ask me have you done something on me so that is the kind of question yeah. as opposed to laser wherein they would definitely feel that warmth for some time it just lingers around for some time yeah so um Microwave, according to you, is more patient friendly. Patient friendly. Yeah. Results wise, are they the same? Exactly the same. I ah, haven't seen okay. any difference between the two. So, if yeah. somebody wants to have their varicosities sealed off with minimal discomfort, it yeah. would be microwave in your experience. Correct, yeah. Microwave ablation. Microwave ablation. And the one more important thing, technical aspect that I would say between the two is we inject something called the tumorcent. Yeah. Uh, tumescent is nothing but like local anesthetic. Yeah, you just uh, seal the seal edges the, of the veins so that it holds it, isn't it? Something, something like that. Something so what like we that. do is we inject a lot of local anesthetic around the vein to create a cushion around the ah, vein. Ah, yeah. yeah. So that's what we do with uh, both laser and microwave ablation. Amount of tumescent that's required for microwave ablation is less compared to, compared to laser ablation. Laser ablation. Yeah. So, uh, you, because you have to inject literally some 30 to 40 cc of the local anesthetic mixed with saline just around the around the vein with the laser ablation only because you're so concerned about the heat which is transmitted to the skin yeah. and the laser burns and other things. To avoid that, we do that. With microwave, we don't have to worry so much about that. Okay. So, technically also, is microwave ablation easier to do? Uh, both are same in terms of technique. Yeah. yeah, there are no challenges, uh, you know, in terms of the technique. You're just putting the same uh, instead of laser fiber, you're putting a microwave antenna, and uh, they probably measure the same as well in terms of the measurements. Also, you don't have Fantastic. to. Fantastic. So let me just uh, see if I'm in, I'm able to summarize or understand everything which which you told me so that the viewers yeah. can understand it. So varicose veins, first of all, can cause symptoms whether you have the enlarged veins or not exactly. and the symptoms are tiredness of the legs swelling a dull ache something itching. like that itching. itching also itching so if you're scratching on on your leg without the mosquitoes and you have scars think of a hidden varicose veins